Devon and back. A methadone and ibogaine trip report by Jason. Posted to earwid.org May 10th, 2006. For the umpteenth time, I was reducing off the methadone. I got down to 25 milligrams, and then unfortunately, I started using once again. I then went up to 60 milligrams. This was very depressing, wanting to get off the methadone and knowing that I would have to reduce again and go through all of this all over. As we know, to reduce from 60 milligrams down to 25 milligrams is much easier than that from 25 milligrams to zero. If I can't handle going to 25 milligrams, how am I going to go from 25 milligrams to nothing? I don't think I can do this anymore. I've been trying for so many years. I was quickly losing interest in living. I just wanted to go home to the other side. Being addicted to opiates for 23 years has become too much to bear. I was at my wit's end. I was giving up and going down fast. One day, soon after, in utter despair, I had a thought come into my head. Hang in there. It's almost over. Being desperate to be pulled out of the ocean of addiction, I held on to that thought. How exactly could this nearly be over? It'll take another year at least to reduce to 60 milligrams. But the thought kept coming to me over and over again. Hang in there. It's almost over. I started to get some hope back. I thought the only way this can be over quick is if I find a great rehab and come straight off the stuff. I now believe the voice in my head was my brother who had passed on. He'd also battled with addiction all his life. I started to search the internet and found this great rehab in the States that uses some of Ron Hubbard's techniques. Nutrition, sauna and other things. I had heard of this type of treatment before, and I was hopeful. I contacted them and spoke to this great guy, but unfortunately I cannot remember the name of. This man told me that I needed to detox before coming to the rehab, and advised me a couple of methods, one of which being the controversial Ibogaine or Iboga, and it gave me a URL to an Ibogaine site. I logged onto this site and started talking to some of the people and reading as much as I could absorb on Ibogaine. I was fortunate to be able to talk to a few people before treatment, as well as during and after. The surge of hope flowing through me was incredible. I could finally see a way out. I was getting goosebumps. I applied for a loan, and got it. I spoke to some providers, and then rang S in Amsterdam. It was then booked and organised. I took 600 milligrams of Fisceptum with me, basically methadone and a tablet, and worked out that if I tripled those for the next three days or so, I would be finished with them as I got to Sarah's, the final stone on opiates before detoxing. I got to Amsterdam airport and was warmly greeted with a hug from S. We jumped into the car and drove to her place. I gave S what little Fisceptum I had left, but when I got to S's, the fear started to set in. This was it. Ah, oh, shit, what am I doing here? I don't think I can actually do this. Nah, I can't do this, I have to go back. For the next few hours, I am trying to figure out how I was going to get back at all. S could see how utterly scared I was and started to calm me. I would have rather a bear came into the camp to attack as I could have seen what I was facing. I stayed the night and woke in the morning very anxious. Fuck. No methadone. Mm. Can't go back and face everyone not having at least tried this though, I guess. I started to get a little sick in the afternoon, and S gave me my first dose of one gram of a boga extract. I laid down and after about one hour, I started to feel relaxed and more at ease with the aboga. A slight vibrating sensation. Knowing this was a very spiritual plant, I gave thanks of each dose and asked for guidance. An hour or two later, I was given 1.8 grams. The vibrating became more and more intense. 
and I felt a low-pitched buzzing in my head and a vibration in my body. Very relaxing, and no withdrawals. About an hour or two later, I was then given three grams, and the low-frequency type of vibrating became more intense. And then I found myself in the jungle, but somewhere similar to it. I was on a mat on the ground, and there were seven or eight tribespeople on each side of it. They picked me up on the mat and started wobbling it, side to side. I knew in that moment that they were healing me. I was vibrating, and saw my cells being vibrated. Within my cells were dark blockages, little bits of black in these brilliant white cells. as I was being wobbled side to side, and I could see my cells vibrating more and more. The blackness started to vibrate out of my cells, and the dark blockages were being dissipated to the sides of the cells and disappearing. It was then that I was given five grams, and after a while there was like this explosion, and I found myself on a round medallion type of thing about eight feet in diameter, like a huge coin of sorts. I was spread eagled on this medallion and could not move, arms and legs all spread out. One side of this medallion was a brilliant, brilliant white, and the other side was pitch black. The medallion started to flip whilst going up, and then it stopped on an angle facing up at about 120 degrees. And then it felt like people put their hands inside my body, my bones from my back, and then they ripped away with a crack. And as this happened, the back of the medallion, which was pitch black, snapped away. And even though I was still spread eagle on the coin, I felt myself falling into this pitch black abyss. This feeling of falling, falling. And at the same time, knowing I was also on the medallion feeling safe. The feeling of falling disappeared, and yet I was still on the medallion. The medallion was now only a brilliant white. It started to flip again and go up, making this type of sound as it went up. Like a wolf, wolf, wolf. The medallion came to a stop, and I was facing this most beautiful light. Love, acceptance. More than light, more than love. I do not have the words to explain such a sight. A vast light, like a liquid love. So bright, so expansive. I was a little concerned and I was told there is nothing to fear. Face the light. And as I did, the light which was everything in that existence, there was nothing else at all. It started to move towards me, and then went through me, and... Oh, what a feeling that was. I started to get champagne bubbles of light going through me, up from my stomach, splitting at the base of my heart, exiting through my shoulders, Shring, shring, shring. It was like I had to be cleansed before going any further. It was like trying to mix 14 karat gold with 24 karat gold. If one does, they taint the pure gold. And so I was smelted, purified so to say. One of my brothers was killed about two years ago. As I was in this light, I saw his head. It was moving from side to side, with these white flames coming off his head like locks of white liquid light. His mouth did not move, but he was speaking to me. There was light coming from his eyes and from his closed mouth, like he was facing a fan, and the fan was blowing his hair, but it wasn't exactly his hair. You cannot die, he said to me. You simply leave your body behind and vibrate into another dimension. I am still alive, just in another dimension now. If you truly want to honour my name, live life to the fullest, and I will live through you until you come home. The love pouring from him was incredible. He was incredible, and so beautiful. I still see him clearly. I was shown I am one with everything, and I felt it. 
I was told I can experience anyone that ever was or is. Yet, who do I wish to experience? I wanted to feel what it would be like to be Jesus. And as I thought this, I was coming into a body from above. This being of light had white light as hair saddling his shoulders. And as I entered this body of light, I got this tremendous feeling of love coming out of my mouth and outstretched hands. Like beacons of light coming from my hands and a tremendous feeling of love and compassion within, being sent out within this world. Whoa. I was falling in love with love itself. This was pure and utter bliss. And as I woke up, I felt as if my heart was outside of my body. It was turned inside out and twisted a little like a gene. I went to get up and as I did, it felt like I would leave my heart behind if I moved too fast. A bit like how your stomach would feel as you go down a roller coaster. And for the next 24 hours or so, I had to cradle my heart outside of my body, like it was my heart's spirit. I would lay down cradling what looked like an empty space above my chest, which I felt was my heart outside my body. It felt red raw, inside out, twisted, and it hurt. After about 24 hours or so, my heart felt like it was untwisting and going back inside me. Then something started to fill my heart with what looked and felt like liquid golden honey. They filled it until my heart overflowed with love. I could feel the liquid honey overflowing and trickling down. The feeling of this was so filling, and the love I felt was more than anything I can honestly describe in words. For the next seven days, I had no withdrawals. My energy was non-existent though, and I couldn't sleep. After about seven days, I started to feel some withdrawals, about 5%, and not sleeping was driving me mad. I was so very bored. I was listening to a lot of music, day and night, a lot of Pink Floyd to the Division Bell. I was so happy though, I'm free. Fuck me, I, I can't believe it. Wow. I kept thinking this over and over and would cry with joy. I'm free. I'm finally free. After about three weeks, I had approximately up to 15% withdrawals. However, they were different this time. Not at a soul level, more physical. Like I was just sick and recovering. I stayed at S's for 27 days. And in this time, took nutrients and S cooked yummy food. Now, I am into my fourth month. I still feel a little not right, however, but I am getting stronger every day. Please bear in mind, I have had 23 years of addiction and came off methadone due to this. My aftercare consists of no friends around me that are using, as well as drinking herbs and a lot of nutrients. They make the mind stronger. No sugar at all except for fruit or an occasional short black coffee. And smoking pot has helped tremendously, as well as exercising, which has helped my sleep. Socialising and laughing my head off is also great. I went to a nightclub and laughed so much that I got kicked out. I honestly couldn't believe it. I have steam baths at the gym to help sweat out the methadone. And to help with sleep I took Kava Kava, Passionflower and Valerian. On top of this, I was also taking Metagenics Fibroplex Plus, as well as Vitamin B Complex and other nutrients. It cannot be properly stated just how much good food is to a huge recovery, and a lot of water. I also gave up many, many years of smoking tobacco. I do still feel like a cigarette now and then, however the urge goes within a minute or two of disappearing. I still find it hard to concentrate, and I do get impatient. Normally, I'm a very patient and tolerant man. <laughs>